Luke chapter 24, the famous journey of Emmaus. In short, the story wants to help us in the times that when you believed in something and then you experienced disappointment. You believed in something, you had an expectation of something that will happen, will come, will, will cease to be, or will be sold, or somehow, and it is not. And the disappointment begins to set in. They were walking, talking about it. After we could look like those two who they stooped looking down, cast, talking among themselves, disappointed, and unable to see, it says, while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. Interesting, in translation, when you go into the Spanish, it says, Pero los ojos de los dos discípulos estaban velados. In the Spanish, it implies that they, they literally were veiled. Something wrapped around their eyes, they were veiled, they can't see. Disappointment and grieving in our disappointment has a way of putting a veil in our eyes, unable to see beyond it. So today, perhaps the Lord wants to address that disappointment you're still struggling with. Perhaps you had this vision, this dream, this expectation of how the sacrament of marriage was going to be like. And in your disappointment, perhaps there's a veil impeding you from seeing something beyond what you expected to be. Or perhaps the whole joy of having a child, raising him, and now the child has gone to teenage years, perhaps young adult, and the disappointment that they did not turn out as you would have thought they would. And you're still downcast, stooped down, blinded to be able to see beyond your expectations and the grief that you're experiencing because of that disappointment. Perhaps it's your health, or the health of a loved one. You pray, you're praying, you're praying for that miracle of healing, and in Christ Jesus, the miracle could be done. You know it. And you keep begging, you keep begging, and the situation keeps getting worse and worse. And it looks like this is going to be the end. Or when someone dies. A disappointment that the Lord didn't give more years of life that things did not turn out the way you expected I'm sure all of us have our own blindfolds because of our grief in the disappointment of things not holding out to be as you thought and wanted and dreamed of what was it to turn things around in the life of these two men that were on the way? One is the fact that Jesus was already walking with them, yet they couldn't see it. So I want you to come to the realization that in your disappointment and in your grief, Jesus is walking with you. He's there. You may not recognize him just as the two apostles, but he's there. And he is that person that's asking you, how are you doing? He's working through that person who's listening. So what things are happening in your life that you're so downcast and so disappointed? He's the one asking the questions through those instrumental people, through those events that are asking you to speak of it, bring it to the light. Now, there's a moment here, it says, but we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. We were hoping. There's something very powerful that happens. One, when a person makes the statement of belief, I believe. And then when your disappointment comes, 
in you taking the risk of believing and they didn't happen. Of course, the blindfold is, is coming because of what you built the expectation or what you hope things will be like. But what if you let go of that? What if you were to say, all right, God, I, I don't get it. And be humble enough to say, but I don't have to get it. You're God. You're God. I'm just a creature. And by your love and your mercy, I am your child. And as revealed in Christ Jesus, you reveal that I am your beloved child. And you are not just God, but you're my father. So if you're my father, and I'm your child, I'm going to let go of my own expectations. And I'm just going to trust in your ways. You know what's best. You see the full picture beyond my limited abilities because of time, space, limited knowledge. You know it. And I trust that whatever you're working, if I just let go of my disappointment and my expectations and my grief and just give it to you, I believe that it, in time I may be able to see it, but even if I'm not able to see the greater good, who cares? I trust you. And I surrender. You are my father. I am your child. You love me. You are only one who is good for me. And in your goodness and in your love, yes, often you allow difficult things. As you allow the crucifixion of your son. And if I am to be your child, I guess I too will have to experience cross, suffering, pain. This is part of being on the way and Father, I trust in you. That prayer is the one that has the power to turn things around. The humble presence before God saying, I am creature, you are God. I don't know, you know. I have my expectations, but I trust that yours are better. And in the end, even if I think mine is better, your will will be done, not mine. And so, instead of banging my head against closed doors, disappointment, frustration, being upset against you, whatever I'm doing, downcast, walking, I, you know what, Lord, I, I'm just going to stay with you. Or better yet, in the words it says, uh, they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther, but they urged him, stay with us. For it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. Very symbolical of, you know, you, you've arrived to this place, which is the place that I'm prompting you to arrive, the place of humility, the place of saying you are God, I'm a creature, you are my father, you love me, I'm your child. I trust, I let go. Here, have my expectations. Here, have my dreams. Here, have whatever I thought it was best for me and my loved one. Here, have it. You've arrived to the village. And notice this word in here, it says, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. Jesus wants to go farther with you. He wants to take you farther beyond your expectation to be able to see what before you were unable to see because you were already blinded and grieved in your expectation. He wants to go further. But in order to do so, you have to invite him in. Stay with me, Lord. Now that I'm taking this up, now that I'm giving it to you, now that I'm surrendering, stay with me. Because this day is almost over. And I don't know what's going to happen after this. Stay with me, Lord. Stay with me. Speak to my heart. Where, where our heart's not burning as he spoke the words. As he broke open the word of God. Stay with him. And even more, stay with him who is present here 
And now, not just through the people who keep asking you how you doing and they walk with you in your grief and disappointment, but the one who is here, right now, and that you are able to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. He is here. He is here. We, we just celebrated Holy Week and, and, and we went through his passion, his death, his resurrection, Hosanna, hallelujah, he's risen from the dead. But where is he? He's here. Perhaps in relationship with Christ, you have expectation of how he's supposed to reveal himself to you. Offer that up too. Because in that expectation, you're unable to see how indeed he is present. He's here. Oh, you have the faces of your own. <laughs> And perhaps you have to ask the Lord, Lord, help me to recognize you in the breaking of the bread. Help me to, to see you. You coming, you the almighty, powerful God in breads and crumbles. I, 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 can't, I, don't, I don't know how to see this. Help me to see, Lord. Stay with me. In wine? Oh, why wine? What? Drinking? Well, I'm supposed to eat you and drink you? I, 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 why, why can't you just appear like you appeared to the apostles to me? In, in the closed doors of my house, just, just walk through it, come to me, show me your wounds, let, let me put my finger on, on them, let me talk to you, let me, let me, talk, let me feed you. Let... Once again, your expectations. And in grieving that that has not happened, you're unable to see was going on further than what you can even imagine. There is a reason why he comes to be present to us in such humble ways. It is him still saying to us, I love you so much that I'm willing not just to become a human being so as to share with you in your humanity. I love you so much that I don't care becoming little crumbs. That's, that's quite a God that loves me that much. For me to become so little so that somehow I could be one with him and he could be one with me. Why food? Why drinking? I, I, I don't know if it happens to you, but you know, I just came from being with my nephews and my sisters and my family, my brother, my mom. Uh, especially the little ones who are, tend to be very affectionate. And, and I'm hugging them and, and I'm squeezing them really hard. And they say, Uncle, you're strong. Squeeze me very hard. And I squeeze them and they're like, oh, oh, oh. And, and it's not enough. Intuitively, we desire to be so intimately one in an embrace of love that we can boom, become one. If we could just do that, what is that love is between a husband and a wife? They want to become one. And hugging your children, you want to become one. And the Lord, if you see beyond the blindness, if you see beyond the crumbs, He's giving us a way to become one with God. And God become one with us. That means that when I receive the Eucharist, not only am I becoming one with Christ, but if the Christ is with the Father, I could become one with the Father in Christ Jesus. And if it is true that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one, if I receive the Holy Eucharist, this is a direct way of receiving His own Spirit because the Spirit of Christ is the Holy Spirit. Oh. That means that when I eat this bread and drink this cup, I could also become one with all the saints. Yes. That I can embrace our Blessed Mother in such a humble act of breaking bread. Yes. That means that I could become one with you. 
Did you with me in a simple act of holy communion? Yes. That means you could become one with your loved one who would die and you miss him so much and you would like to hug him and kiss him. Through the breaking of the bread, you can embrace him and be one with him. Because in Christ Jesus, nothing can separate us from his love. If you can only go further as Jesus Christ giving you the impression, hey, if you let me, I, I'll stay with you, but I could take you even further. You know what it is to be one with God beyond time and space? And we're able to do this right here. There's a reason why Jesus Christ has not appeared again. Why? Because we recognize him in the breaking of the bread. And the moment they took of that body, blood, soul, and divinity, there was no more need for the risen Lord to stay in the risen form of a body because now it is in body, blood, soul, and divinity through the Holy Eucharist. If you could only see beyond your disappointment, beyond your expectations, and see the mystery that is unfolding right here. For my nephews and nieces, I was watching, what is that, the ant, uh, ant man and the bee woman, and what, what are the, the quantum realm, uh, help me out, what's the name of this movie again? Quantum, quantum what? Quantum Mania, the, the last movie that come out with the Ant Man and the, has a daughter and the, the, the grandparents. Pretty funny because it's the whole family, you know, grandparents, the parents, and the child, and they all enter into this quantum realm. If you only knew that when we enter here, we are entering an entire different realm before beyond time and space. This is the memorial of the suffering, dying, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Coming into this realm right here is being at the foot of the cross to see Christ giving his life and saying, Father, forgive them. They not know what they do. You're there right here beyond time and space to walk with Mary to walk with Jesus, to help him carry the cross. You, this is the way you enter beyond time and space. It's still happening. It's not like people think that, okay, the Eucharist is, uh, Jesus comes from heaven and boom, now he's here. And now, oh, he's here. And break. No, it's, it's something opens up that you can now enter into the eternal present moment of Jesus Christ still dying, still giving himself out of love, pouring himself in mercy. Dying, resurrecting all at once in one eternal. And this is the portal. You want to enter? It's right there. But perhaps you have your expectations. Perhaps you want to touch him, put your finger like Thomas. Yeah, I understand. I often go through that myself. But surrender it. Say, Lord, I don't know. You know. You know what's best for me. And if Jesus Christ were to resurrect and appear right in front of me, in the, I, I probably pass out. And if he does, that's the end of time. Uh, hold on, let me give me more time. Because when he comes again, and he will, that will be the end. Do you really want him to come that bad? <laughs> just give it up. Not just in relationship with Jesus Christ, but that relationship with Jesus Christ in relationship with your marriage, with your children, with your health, fear of death, whatever it is that you are disappointed with in regards to life, just surrender it and say to the Lord, Lord, stay with me. This is almost over. I could feel it. And it's about to begin a new day and I'm afraid I don't know what you will reveal. But do take me further. And let my heart be burning as I hear you speak to my heart through Scripture. That I may be with you once again in that eternal present moment, which is the anticipation of what will be in heaven, and receive you, recognize you in the breaking of the bread, and to take you in, to be consumed by you and you consumed in me, one with everything beyond time and space, there at the foot of the cross, there in the arms of Mary, 
there in a tomb, there risen from the dead. I am yours. I don't know. You're God. I'm a creature. You're father. I'm your child. I surrender. Stay with me and take me further that I may recognize you in the breaking of